All right. Well, welcome everyone to the Wilsonia Avenue uh, Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming meeting. Uh, today is March 18th, 2024, and we are meeting virtually at 7 p.m. Um, so to get us started, we're going to just quickly review what is traffic calming. Um, this is a neighborhood street traffic calming program. So what that means, we focus on residential streets only, um, not commercial districts or, or industrial. And then, um, you know, any like larger roads like arterials are, are generally not part of the traffic calming program. We like to focus on physical solutions to encourage lower speeds. And we do that over significant lengths. So we try not to do you know, one block at a time, project by project, but uh, choose longer corridors and see a, a more significant effect of speed reduction. And that really is our, our main goal here is um, taking speeds that folks are driving on roads where people live and bringing them down to um, a level that's safe and, and appropriate for a neighborhood. Uh, there are three E's in traffic calming. Uh, those are education, enforcement, and engineering. Um, engineering is sort of what uh, NDOT is here to do. They're um, the National Department of Transportation. That's who's running this program. Um, we also do a little bit of education. Um, so that's kind of like what we're doing here tonight, talking about speeds and um, you know infrastructure. And then there's enforcement, which is really more the um, responsibility of Metro Nashville Police Department. Uh, as much as we'd like to have, um, you know, enforcement everywhere, they're simply not able to to be everywhere at once. Um, so, in the absence of uh, police officers giving tickets to everyone who's speeding, we we like to kind of rely on um, engineering solutions to to do that without having to, you know, have someone there at all times. Um, to zoom in a little bit on, on why speeding is so critical to safety, um, we have this infographic published by the National Transportation Safety Board, and it's really intended to just sort of underscore why speeds and safety are so closely linked. Um, so what we're seeing here is, is basically at a 25 mile an hour speed, if a pedestrian is struck by a car, um, they have a pretty good chance of surviving. Uh, not 100%, unfortunately, um, but 89% is is certainly not as uh, as poor odds as when those speeds get higher and higher. So, off to the right, that 45 mile an hour range, you know, two thirds of the time, if if you get hit by a car, um, you, you wouldn't make it out of that. So. We take this very seriously. It's very important um, that we keep all of our uh, citizens safe. And that's really what we're here to talk about and, and work toward with this project. Um, this is a really popular program. So the map off to the right is um, Nashville's traffic calming tracker. And every short purple line you see there is a neighborhood who has applied to have traffic calming on their street. Um, as of August 2023, when um, Wilsonia was selected, there were over 500 neighborhoods in the queue, um, you know, hoping to be chosen for, for traffic calming. Uh, in the summer of 2023, we were able to choose 85, which is a, a pretty good, um, a pretty sizable chunk relative to what we're normally able to do. Uh, typically, it's about 25, so we're we're really excited. We're able to knock um, you know a lot more of these out at once. Um, and then outside of the traffic calming program uh, is is Hub Nashville. So there's a few things that that we are able to consider for Wilsonia through this program, but there's all kinds of things um, that are sort of outside what the traffic calming program does. Um, and for those, uh, you know, you can call 311 to reach them. Uh, Hub.nashville.gov is the online website. And then they also have an app, which is really useful. That's the uh, the screenshot off to the right there. It's, it's pretty user friendly and you're able to make requests to the city about just about anything. Uh, I, I use it fairly often and it is, it is a nice service to have. Um, so if we do discuss anything that um, Hub would be useful for, I'll be sure to let you know. But just wanted to make sure everyone was aware of that tool before we we jump in. Um, and then finally, the 
prioritization, I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how we chose um, the 85 streets that we're doing um, that, that we selected last summer out of that big pool of 500. And essentially, there's just a, a data driven scoring system that um, we basically go to every street that's applied and take uh, measurements for the speeds people are going, how many cars are, are driving. And then we'll use that and plug them into this pie chart off to the right to generate a score that's that's ultimately used to rank every street in order of of need. Um, so Wilsonia was uh, observed to need traffic calming based on speeds, volumes, um, vulnerable injury, vulnerable user injury or fatality, um, non-driver accommodations. That's like, do you have sidewalks or don't you? And and if you do have a sidewalk, that actually hurts the score a little bit, just because um, we do recognize it's important to slow cars down on on roads that people are forced to walk if they need to um and then finally that little uh slice up the up the top is trip destinations so that's really like a school or a park um those are just understood to generate more walking trips and we want to be extra careful around around things like schools basically um so before we go much further i want to pause and just kind of make sure we haven't covered anything that folks want to know more about. Um, we can just stop for questions. Uh, feel free to put them in the chat if you'd like, or you're welcome to come off mute and, and ask out loud. Either is just fine. Sounds like we can move ahead. I have, oh. Can I? If I may, yeah, absolutely. so Wilsonia Avenue from Hickory Valley, that's going to include the piece that would really be West Hillwood. Um, or you mean, Hick oh, I see, never mind, Hickory Valley at the other part of Wilsonia down at the end. I think so, yeah. Sorry, I mean, not, didn't, not didn't think of my geography. <laughs> no worries. Um, cool. Well, so let's uh, go ahead and talk about Wilsonia specifically. Um, like we just covered, uh, this is the segment from Hickory Valley Road to Hillwood Boulevard. That should be the whole thing. Uh, it kind of triangles into Hillwood, and I think that's where it stops rather than continuing on. Um, but down below, these are the measurements that that we took um, to plug into our, our data equation. And we noticed the 85th percentile speed is 35 or 39 miles an hour um, compared to the posted speed of, of 30. Um, so the 85th speed, just in case anyone isn't aware, that's uh, it's like the median, but rather than half going above and half going below, 15% um, of data points are above 39, and then 85% are are below. So it's it's not an average exactly, but it is a good statistical indicator of um, you know how fast like a normal driver might be might be traveling. Uh, volume that was uh, 1,791 vehicles per day. That was a little more than than I was expecting, um, just because the neighborhood Wilsonia is in isn't particularly dense, but it does connect to a much larger road. So we suspect that it may be used as a, a cut through by some, um, perhaps. And then it is 20 feet wide, so that's about as narrow as uh, Nashville streets will come, but. Um, we're able to, you know, do traffic calming all the same, but it does sort of underscore the importance of um, making sure people are driving at an appropriate speed, because if you are walking from one place to another, you're already on a pretty narrow road and have to be, uh, have to share that with, with vehicles. Um, this is a screenshot from uh, the traffic calming tracker that I mentioned earlier. Um, so you can see, Wilsonia is highlighted in kind of a pale green color, as is Hillwood Boulevard. Um, that's the other traffic calming meeting that's happening tonight. Um, so it was convenient that these two streets kind of happened in a, a pair of sorts. Um, and then you can go online and sort of see what other traffic calming related things are going on in the neighborhood. Um, so the blue dashed lines, those are projects that have been completed. Uh, the thinner purple lines, those are ones who have applied but not yet been selected. Um, and then there are a few other colors like green, teal. That means those are somewhere in the process between application and completion. 
Um, anything we want to pause and, and talk about before I um, expand on kind of the tools we have in the program at our disposal? All right, sounds like we can charge right ahead. Um, so as many who are familiar with the traffic calming program are aware, um, NDOT relies very heavily on speed cushions as kind of their, their bread and butter for slowing speeds. Um, for anyone who hasn't seen these, they're, they're modular rubber devices that are bolted down onto the pavement. Um, and the reason that we choose cushions over like a long speed table, um, that's one that stretches all the way across the road, is that there's a reduced impact to emergency vehicles. So the, the thought process behind these is that um, a smaller vehicle with a narrower wheelbase will be um, affected by this and, and forced to like either put one wheel or the other on it or just go straight over. Whereas uh, an emergency vehicle like an ambulance or a fire truck, um, they've got a little bit wider wheelbases and they can um, shoot the gap a little bit more than, than a smaller car might. Uh, they're only about three inches tall. Um, they're six feet wide. That's that you know kind of precise width that I mentioned. And then they come in a handful of different lengths. Uh, so seven is the shortest we use. That's really just ramping up and then ramping down. Uh, ten and a half foot is where they put that middle section in there. So that bottom left picture, that's a ten and a half foot cushion. Um, and then fourteen foot. Um, those are the longest and are designed for sort of the higher volume, faster um, target speed roads. Um, and the thought behind that is you just have a little bit more gradual uh, speed hump rather than the more um, effective at slowing speeds, uh, shorter cushion. So in the same family as speed cushions are speed tables, like I mentioned before. Um, as you can see, these stretch all the way across the road. They're a little bit longer. Um, and the, the main difference is they don't have those gaps for uh, larger vehicles to use. We try not to use these um, except in rare circumstances because, um, you know, National Emergency Services prefers to, to minimize the impact to their routes. Um, but there are, you know, certain instances where it may be appropriate to put a speed table in just if there's a, a weird width of, um, of road that we're, we're contending with or, or some other special needs. So how do we know that these vertical measures actually work? Um, well, in addition to a lot of national research over the last you know, 25 years that demonstrates these speed cushions have their intended effect, um, NDOT in Nashville decided to do their own study of, of six different locations around the city where they took before and after measurements um, of driver speeds on the roads where they were installed. Um, they were pleased to see that in Nashville, the results they got essentially mirror those of the national research that's been done. And we can see they lower speeds quite a bit. So um, where an average speed used to be 31 miles an hour, now it's 22. And then that 85th percentile statistic we talked about earlier, um, that went down all the way from 37 to 25, um, averaging together the data from those six different projects. Um, moving on to a few more uh, less commonly used tools, we have radar feedback signs. Um, so we've probably all seen these before, but essentially it's a solar powered sign um, that will take your speed and flash it back at you just so you know, am I going slower than the speed limit or am I going faster? Am I going way faster? Um, and it also will collect data about the, the speeds and send it on to um, back to NDOT. There's no cameras or anything involved, so it's not like tracking vehicles themselves, but just taking, you know, a radar reading of, you know, how fast was that thing that went by going. Um, we do see they have an impact at first, reducing speed limits like six or seven miles an hour. Um, we're not sure if that is a particularly lasting effect. Um, more, more data analysis is needed. Um, NDOT's suspicion is that these tend to work at first, but then wear off a little bit. Uh, but in general, we don't like to rely on these alone because they don't physically 
stop cars from from speeding. Um, you know, anyone is capable of of driving by one of these and ignoring the the flashing light that it's um, sending to you. Um, we also can do some pavement narrowing. I'm not going to spend too much time on this just because Wilsonia is as narrow as it's going to be. But um, the thought here essentially is if you take a really wide, comfortable road and um, sort of simulate a narrower amount of space, the effect is that drivers would, would slow down just a bit. Um, we usually use this in concert with other tools, but uh, it is something you know in our in our toolbox. Um, and then for intersections, we can do things like bulb outs. And that's basically where we'll use paint and flexible delineators to take a wide intersection that you can comfortably drive at high speeds through and kind of choke it down to a, a smaller intersection where you'll need to slow down to maneuver through it a little more carefully. And this can be a really big benefit to pedestrians, both because they're not as worried about cars driving really fast around corners and not seeing them, and it also narrows the amount of space that they're crossing um, where they're subjected to cars. Uh, so it, it's kind of a, I guess, a double-edged sword um, because it, it helps pedestrians in both of those ways. Then on the right, um, we've got chicanes. That's sort of where we take a really wide road and narrow it down and then um, sort of zigzag back and forth in a way that, that forces drivers to um, maneuver more than if they were just going straight you could um you know go considerably faster if you weren't having to make any turns so that's how those work again we don't have enough width on wilsonia to do much of that um so we don't need to belabor it too too much um, and then finally we have traffic circles um these are effective in really large intersections where um, it's kind of like the same principle as a bulb out, you know, forcing someone to maneuver around the circle rather than just driving straight through. Um, I think Wilsonia actually has not circles necessarily, but both um, Term and I are kind of those triangular intersections. Um, those, those work sort of the same way. Um, so that's all the tools. Uh, what I've got on my screen now is one half of the Wilsonia concept design. Um, we'll start over here and just kind of go left to right. But um, does anyone have questions about the, the tools? Is there anything we need to skip back to and, and, and chat about? I think a couple of people may have joined late and didn't hear the first part that Wilsonia and Hillwood as well are both going to be are both on the list to get this done. And that's a certainty. Um, so the way traffic calming works is we present a concept design, uh, develop plans, and then everyone who owns property along the street will vote if they want the, the project. Um, so it'll be a certainty if the ballot passes. Um, but in, until then, it's it's up to the you know the folks that are that are on the street. Hi, this is Blair Durham. I live on Wilsonia. I was just curious, Do I joined a few minutes late and I saw the 85th uh, percent stat. Does, does that correlate at all to police presence? Um, you know, if we had a, a police officer like visibly camping out on Wilsonia, um, I'm sure people would not be speeding by them as much as they are where, um, you know, it's pretty clear that a police officer isn't there. I don't think NDOT has done a study to that effect, though. Okay. And then a follow-up question of that is, I know in Bellmead on at, at least one of the streets, you, you mentioned the, the digital uh, solar-powered measurements that mark your speed. They have an actual X. Is there, have there been any studies that that last longer or is more effective? Um, would you repeat that? They have an actual so, what on the sign? Yeah, on uh, Linwood, they have the solar powered speed display that, that flashes at you what your speed is, but they also have a red X that starts blinking if you're speeding. 
And I was just curious if there were any studies that show that's more effective than just the speed. Oh, got it. Um, I'm sure there are not Nashville specific, and there actually just this year have been new um, rules published in the the manual that, that dictates all signs. Um, so as of recently, there's pretty specific, um, you know, guidelines as to gotcha. what the signs need to be, and, and I think they discourage actually like flashing at at drivers. Um, I, I guess the worry is that it would be, you know, distracting potentially, you know, right at the wrong moment. David, I have a question. Sure. Uh, Gary here on Wilsonia. And I got on the earlier meeting and listened to the Hillwood drive, and it looks like it's pretty obvious it was well supported and, and it's going to be going forward. But Mr. Hammond said that there was no evidence that uh, once they do something like Hillwood, with the calming bumps that other streets increase in traffic. And I would just like to say this about that. At, uh, your car count of 1,700 plus a day is indicative of the amount of new traffic that's moving from Charlotte down Wilsonia to end up at the same spot that Hillwood ends up and Wilsonia going across to Linwood and Belmead. So, I'm highly supportive of this uh, speed humps to go in unison with Hillwood. And I think they need to study, instead of the upper part of Wilsonia, the West Hillwood Boulevard corridor, because the volume of traffic that's feeding this whole cut through to West End and Green Hills is West Hillwood and Hillwood. And I thank you. Yeah, understood. Um... So yeah, I, I see what you're saying, looking at the the network from a distance like this, um, if, if cars are going sort of north, uh, west to southeast, there's only a, a handful of routes they would take. And um, I'm, I'm assuming both Hillwood Boulevard and Wilsonia have been observing this, um, which is what gave you all the um, push to apply. Uh, certainly West Hillwood Drive, um, should, should apply if they also feel uh, like people are using their road to speed on. Um, from this tracker, we can see that they haven't applied yet, which is maybe a good thing um, if, if those measurements are taken after this traffic calming is put in. Um, like Jeff said, we don't really know or have like comprehensive data to support one um, you know, volume diversion theory over another, but um, Certainly, it's it's convenient that both of these are are going at the same time, so we don't have to uh, worry so much that you know one of them is going to get traffic calming and the other one's going to you know be inundated by um, people that that choose the other route. Um, any other questions about the the tools? One other question. This is Blair Durham again. What sure. what I had noticed, I, I take. Vine Ridge to turn left on the White Bridge to go to Charlotte to work. And depending on the time of day that I leave, I'm curious if Vine Ridge has been studied because it seems like the worst offenders of boogieing through this area, Wilsonia and West Hillwood, are students that are headed to Nashville State that mm -hmm. take the Vine Ridge um, turn to get to their school. Yeah, um, definitely. I could see it how those those roads are laid out that folks would want to use Vine Ridge. Um, it doesn't look like they have applied for the the program. I'll just back up a little bit. Um, we we do our counts and speed measurements after an application has been received. So that's really the what kicks off this whole you know process. Um, we would definitely welcome them to apply if, if they'd like to, but um, we, we, don't, we don't do much more counting than, than what the traffic calming program asks for. This is Stuart Lyman on Wilsonia. I've got a question. Um, I'm supportive of this and think speed is definitely an issue, but I do have a question. Have, have there been any studies related you know, after installation 
My only concern is just noise from cars, you know, slowing down and braking or their suspension going over these humps. How has that been received? <laughs> um, yeah. So, so far, no one in Nashville that I'm aware of has, has complained about noise caused by speed cushions. Um, and there actually is in the body of national research and appendix that sort of digs into this question and their conclusion as well is that they don't really cause noise that's so loud that it's it's more noticeable than before um i think if it's anything like my neighborhood the loudest vehicles are the ones that you know come on and, and drive you know 50 miles an hour and, and really gun it hopefully doing speed cushions here will prevent that type of driver um and and you know i i can imagine if you were like standing right next to a a car it driving over a speed cushion would would be a different noise than than not but um w without you know being so close i'm not sure it's it's going to be significant thank you sure david another yes. question um are these the same type of cushions that are on breslin road that goes from Davidson to the interstate? Um, that's, that's a great question. Um, I, I have, don't exactly to know. Me, they, look, they look like it. Um, mm -hmm. But my wonder is this on Breslin, maybe it's a matter of how, so in one of your pictures, there's white lines, which we don't have on Wilsonia on mm -hmm. Breslin, people scoot around into people's yards to get around them. And so my yeah. question is, can you, you know, place them in a way where someone can't do that? Kind of defeats the purpose if they're trying to go around. Yeah, absolutely. And agreed 100%. Um, so we do consider, um, I'm going to have to take a look at Breslin after the call and just sort of see what the deal is there. But yeah, it's it's not unheard of that folks will attempt to drive around cushions, particularly when they're laid out in a way that makes that a little more inviting. So on the picture in the top right, uh, what we can see is there's actually kind of a mountable curb and um, sort of flat yards and a little bit of space between that outside cushion and the curb. Um, if that were installed today, it would not be a huge surprise if somebody did drive around it and it only takes you know one out of a hundred to be really annoying um what we'll do on wilsonia is sort of leave a like a three or four foot gap in the middle and then have those cushions either be in the center of the lanes or even like hug the outside a little more um and that combined with the the storm ditches that are in most spots um we suspect will be enough to not have folks go all the way off the road and um, avoid speed cushions that way. I can't promise that no one would do it. I mean, I've seen some of the craziest stuff that <laughs> you, you, you could think of, um, but we will design these with that in mind. And we've had pretty good experience um, with that not being as much of a problem when we're deliberate about how we lay the cushions out. Uh, David, this is Susan Leshen on Wilsonia. I've got just a, a quick question. So my parents have, they live on Jackson Boulevard and have a speed hump directly in front of their house. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it's great. I'm in complete in favor of them. Uh, but I did want to ask, is there any move to try to put these a little bit sort of between the houses so that you don't have the sense that people are slowing down right in front of your house? Um, yes and no. So our main constraints that we have to heed are um, strategic spacing of these as well as grades. So speed cushions are, are only able to be installed on grades of 7% or so or less. Um, so usually we don't put them on like the steepest part of the hill. We'll sort of put it on a hill as it starts to flatten out um, at the top of the bottom. And then we also do not ever want to put these directly in front of folks' driveways um, because then they have to like drive over and turn over one or maybe they're backing out. Um, we want to avoid that as, as much as possible. So 
depending on the neighborhood, that makes it um, kind of difficult to also consider a lot of other factors as well. Um, I will say on Wilsonia, a lot of the lots that are here will have um, kind of a, a rainbow shaped driveway where you'll have an entrance and an exit basically at both corners of a property. Um, in that situation, really the only spot we're able to put a cushion is, is centered between the two, which is, you know, in, in front of the, the house. So on Wilsonia, I'm sure there will be, you know, fewer than, or yeah, more than, than one instance where it is kind of like situated in front of a person's house, but it's, it's because we don't want to impede those, those people's driveways. Okay, thanks. That's good information. I appreciate it. Of course. All right. Um, well, we can move on to the concept itself. So this is uh, sheet one. This is sheet two. Uh, basically, over the length of Wilsonia, we're proposing um, a total of nine sets of speed cushions. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, we try to place these strategically uh, spacing wise, and we're really shooting for far enough apart that they're not um, you know, disruptive to folks who live here and wanna drive us every day. Um, we definitely don't wanna overdo it. Um, and then underdoing it means they're far apart enough that somebody who is motivated to speed is able to hit the gas and get back up to an unsafe speed before they need to slow down for the next one. Um, so depending on what target speed we're shooting for, uh, that lands somewhere in between 300 and 500 feet apart. And then there are also distances from intersections and um, you know other considerations we, we take into account. But uh, having gone out to Wilsonia and looked at all the grades, looked at the spacing, um, we, we felt that, you know, nine, nine cushions was, you know, an amount that will help achieve the goals, but without, um, you know, being really obnoxious. Um, we can stay on this as long as you'd like. Um, I'm here for questions, if there's any particulars about the, the design, um, other things you were hoping to see, um, different ideas. Um, Part part of this meeting is you know me hearing from from the neighborhood and um, being made aware of anything that I may not be aware of as the the designer before we finalize our plans. Hi, David. This is Marguerite Orndorf. I live at two hundred four Wilsonia, which is kind of at the bottom of the hill, so to speak, between Red Oak and Post Road. Um, yeah which cars coming down the hill really do reach a, a terrifying speed by the time they're getting towards post road. Um, mm -hmm. But the intersection of Red Oak and Wilsonia, it's become quite a cut through over to the light um, at Target that was added on White Bridge Road. So people are coming off of post road onto Wilsonia, then taking a ride onto Red Oak to, to work their way over to that light and the same in reverse. And there's a lot of running the stop sign at Red Oak and Wilsonia, people kind of rolling through it. Um, mm -hmm. And so in addition to the speed bumps, which I'm in full support of, or speed cushions, I guess we call them now, uh, is there anything that can also be done to reinforce um, the stop sign there? And I'm sure that they have the same problem at um, up the hill with people rolling through, you know, more lines or, uh, I don't know, maybe a crosswalk there since we don't have sidewalks, anything that would kind of alert people that they actually do need to stop. Um, the stop sign doesn't seem to quite be cutting it. Um, any, any thoughts there? That would be welcome as well. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so the, the closest thing that comes to mind is some version of um, bulb outs, which is the one to the, the left here. Um, if we were to kind of tighten up the radius at which a person would have to turn um, such that they would need to really like almost come to a complete stop in order to turn without hitting something, uh, we could do that. Um, I don't exactly know how wide Red Oak is. Um, 
So if, if it was also like 20 feet wide, we wouldn't be able to do too, too much. Uh, but certainly that's something we could investigate and, and I'll take a note of it just so, um, you know, I'll, I'll take a look after the meeting and see if it's a good idea. Um, as far as crosswalks, we, we usually won't do one of those unless there are like pedestrian facilities that's connecting both points. Um, so if you had sidewalks um, without a crosswalk, we would we would consider it. But really, that's almost already stepping kind of outside of the goals of the traffic calming program. Um, but it's good to know that that is a you know, sensitive area for the project and, and we'll be able to take a look and see if all that's might help. Great. Thank you so much. Sure. Hey, David, this is Jim Fraser. I'm Marguerite's neighbor at 202. What's mm -hmm. the timing on the plan? And maybe I missed it. I came in a little late in terms of implementation and scheduling of deployment. Yeah, you did not miss it. Um, that is this slide. And um, if, if we don't have more questions about the design itself, I'm happy to move on. Uh, we can also come back as well. Um, but I guess to, before we jump into sort of the next steps and flowchart and all that, do we, do we want to wrap up any um, design specific questions? Um, hi, this is Carlisle Hamling at 209 Wilsonia. I'm on the other side of Red Oak. Um, yeah. And I would just say there is a lot of foot traffic, people walking along Wilsonia. Um, so I am in favor of this. It looks like I'm getting one right in front of my house, which shall be interesting. But um, I really would like y'all to take into consideration what this does mean for the people who we don't have sidewalks. And as you said, we do have um, the drainage ditch to, a, you know, in some places, and it makes it pretty precarious when two people are coming, when two cars are coming and there's somebody on the side of the road. So I'd really like for y'all to take that into consideration when you're putting them in that you don't let cars go over into the into the median, um, the sides of the roads, the shoulders for our safety. Yeah, yeah I, I agree completely. And that is the top you know, goal in mind when we design the cross section of a, a speed cushion layout is removing any temptation for drivers to drive off the road and around them. Um, okay, and, and I would also like to add with what they're doing at the Bellmead Kroger and how that's getting ready to change and the plans that they have of traffic coming out of that Bellmead Kroger, they will be able to take a right and immediately take a right onto the Hillwood Bridge. So I do think that there will be more traffic on our street. Um, and so I am, I am in favor of this, but I think we're going to get more cars. Um, and we're still going to have people walking on the sidewalk. It's just not safe for children to walk on the, on our streets at the time being, but that's it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. I second that. Um, I, I walked the whole thing. Didn't really feel great about, uh, cars driving so close to, uh, the side of the road there. So I 100% relate and, um. Yeah, we, we absolutely will make sure to design this in such a way that doesn't encourage uh, drivers to leave, you know, the lane they're supposed to be in. Um, let's see, and then I guess to address the volume question, we'll, we, we don't try to reduce the volume of streets by putting traffic calming on, um, but I would like to think that for those hoping to use Wilsonia as a quick cut through, um, driving over speed cushions to to do that, you know, might let them entertain a different option. David, this is John Bryant, uh, two seventeen Wilsonia. Um, I would just note that the the pavement surface on the road itself is is way past its prime most parts of the street, especially the upper part between West Hillwood and Hickory Valley. I'm assuming that there, there's not any pavement upgrading um, going in as a part of this program. There's not. Um, there's a paving replacement program that runs um, constantly, and they're, they're working their way through their own list, basically uh, 
the the timeline that that happens on is just different and independent of traffic calming. Um, so if it were Wilsonia going to get paved like very soon, it's it's possible they would try to coordinate and put these cushions down like right after the paving, but um, that'll all you know happen in the kind of construction queue process. Um, they they definitely don't bump streets up on the paving list because of, of traffic calming because cushions are easy enough to um they're pretty easy to put down they're also easy to to pull up pave and then you know put right on back when when the time comes thank you yeah. um anyone any other questions before we move on to to this slide Okay, um, and again, there will be questions at the end. So if there's anything we we need to talk about, um, there's there's still time. But this flowchart is sort of the full program here. Um, as I mentioned before, it all starts with an application um, that's sent to NDOT by residents of a street. Um, we then collect data with um, your speed collection and volume collection tools, and they go into our prioritization and selection formula. The red circle is us right now. We're in the neighborhood meeting. Um, so everyone on Wilsonia should have gotten a mailer postcard inviting them. Um, and the next steps are design. So what we need to do is take the feedback from you all, um, kind of check our notes, make sure that all of our observations are, are correct, and then ultimately draw up construction plans um, that have really specific locations, um, enlarged views of the street, um, down to the, you know, nearest five feet or so, like, where's this going? Where's that going? What signs are going to be where? Um, all of that used by the, the contractor to, to build the project to the, uh, you know, appropriate level of precision. Um, after the design is done, we can do one of two things. Uh, we can schedule a second neighborhood meeting to review those plans um and then do the online ballot uh, that is where we post the plans online and everyone will get a postcard in the mail inviting them to vote um they'll say yes or no and if 66 percent of respondents uh, say yes the project will move forward and then um that'll go into the construction queue which currently is between eight and ten months long um basically we've designed a lot of these and it's been hard for a number of reasons for the construction side to keep up um but locally ndot has has onboarded a couple more contractors able to pitch in so optimistically we'd like to see this eight to ten month timeline come down a bit um but right now that's kind of a conservative estimate we're we're willing to give to you all um the important decision we want to make now is are most people generally comfortable with um, the design we have and think they could decide yes or no um, based on you know reviewing the plans that are posted online or do we want to meet again um, after the design is done to to sort of go over what we covered already but then review the plans in a little more detail um, ask more questions things like that um, and we do have a pretty big group online here, but I'll, I'll still just sort of invite, um, you know, anyone to voice yay or nay if, um, you know, they have an opinion one way or another. It's really fine either way from, from NDOT's perspective. Uh, we we want to just make sure that the neighborhood is, um, you know, happy with the project we're proposing. I'm a yay. Full support, David. Get it done. 215 is a yay. 204 yeah. is a yes. Okay. 217, yeah. agree. 410 <laughs> is a yes. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Um, if for some reason anyone feels strongly the, the other way, um, feel free to get in touch. But, but for now, we'll go ahead and just assume. We'll finish our design, post the plans, um, get you all your ballots, and then uh, commence the, the balloting process. Um, so because we are going to do that, I'm going to spend a little time zeroing in on what that um, process is going to look like. 
like I mentioned before, um, this happens in the form of postcards. So we mail one to every every property owner on Wilsonia um, to that address. And each postcard has a unique ID. The thought behind that is um, it's just a way for us to know that every vote that comes in is valid. And you don't have one person like voting 10 times or something like that. Um, the voting is open for six weeks. So we feel that's a pretty generous amount of time to make sure everyone gets their ballot mailer. Um, we also want to make sure the opportunity is there for neighbors who are passionate one way or the other to kind of spread the word, talk to their neighbors, um, you know, educate anyone who wasn't able to attend this meeting. Um, but then ultimately, you know, you'll go online and vote yes or no. And like I said before, if um, two thirds of the respondents say yes, the project will move forward. Um, so it's not two thirds of everyone who lives on the street. Um, it's just those that that vote kind of like how any other, you know, election works. Um, this is the ballot zone. So every parcel that's highlighted yellow was um, considered for voting. We do do a couple of, of filters on this. Um, so it's residential properties are the ones that are we're focused on. So if any of these was like a, a Taco Bell or something, we would you know see that and exclude their um, parcel from the, the ballot. And then um, only owners on the effective affected right of way. Um, so you don't have to have a Wilsonia address. You could be pointing to like the cross street, but if you have a property line that touches Wilsonia, um, we'll, we'll grab your, your name and, and send it to you. Um, if there are any properties that are like vacant, um, we, we don't send mail to them uh, just because we know that no one is like living there, experiencing the traffic. Um, and then owners with multiple properties uh, will we'll only get the one vote. So we don't want, um, you know, situations where one person's voice is like 10 times louder because they own 10 properties instead of instead of one. Um, any questions about uh, how balloting works or the ballot eligibility? Um, Oh, I guess one thing I didn't cover um, on this postcard, uh, you can scan this code to vote, you can enter this web address, or you can call this phone number. Um, so someone at NDOT should pick up the phone and, and you know, basically help you vote if um, that's your preference. So that's totally fine as well. And, and one more thing, if you hear that like your neighbor got their ballot card and it's you know been maybe a couple weeks since the balloting opened uh, we're fine if if you reach out and just like let us know hey i think i was supposed to get a ballot and i didn't um what's going on we'll we'll be able to you know look you up and and if you have a you know code you were supposed to get we'll we'll just tell it to you um so that's all the information i've got um, happy to take any questions that uh, you know still need to be answered. Uh, we've got you know as much time as you'll need. Just let me know. All right. Um, oh, sorry, Dave. When would you guess the ballots would go out approximately? Based on we don't need another neighborhood meeting. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to look into the question about Red Oak and Wilsonia. Uh, that will maybe take a few days to a week. Um, the plans don't happen instantly, but probably within another week after that. And then I'll send the ballots out, um, you know, as soon as the plans are done. So today's Monday, um, before the end of next week, I think we should have something in NDOT's court. And if it's not, in your mailboxes, they'll they'll be like on your way to, to your your mailboxes by then. Great, thank you. Sure. All right. Well, um, thanks everyone for getting on. This was uh, this was a good meeting. I really appreciate everyone you know taking the time to join, um, offer your feedback. Um, you can follow NDOT on some various social medias if you'd like. And then this big QR code is going to take you to Nashville's traffic calming website where they have 
a lot more information um, if, if any questions do pop up. And then uh, this is my email address. Um, feel free to get in touch if anything should come up. Um, I'll ask that you do also copy n.trafficcalming at national.gov just to keep n.staff in the loop, but um, I'll be happy to help you with any questions um, as well. Um, but if no one else has anything, we can go ahead and wrap up and uh, I'll, I'll wish you all a good night and a happy Monday. Thank you. Thank you. All right.